Let's talk about AI. It's a little bit excessive at this point. We can't do anything cool or interesting without somehow shoving a chat GPT client into it, even when it provides no tangible benefit to the user experience. I know you need Powered by AI as the tagline to receive your next lot of VC funding, but maybe we can do better than just calling an API for hallucinated content. Before AI meant whatever Sam Altman is working on this week, you could use much simpler tools and algorithms to create artificial intelligences. To me, AI is any software that can give the impression of critical thinking. Large language models perform really well in this metric, but they also come with disadvantages. Large language models are what I would personally classify as a level 5 artificial intelligence. They are the absolute peak of our current capabilities. If you need to spice up your life with AI to get that sweet, sweet funding, chances are there is a cheaper, more specialized alternative that can give you better results for your actual product. In my mental model of the AI landscape, large language models are a level 5 AI, and there are four other levels that you should consider before going for the nuclear option. I'm going to implement a simple version of each of these levels and use these examples to cover their use cases, strengths, and weaknesses. It is easier than ever to get started with AI. And to prove this, all examples will be written in raw HTML, CSS, and JavaScript with no dependencies. A level one AI is as simple as it gets. I'm sure some people wouldn't even call this artificial intelligence. But in my opinion, it can definitely give the impression of critical thinking. A level 1 AI is just a metric ton of if-else statements. I call this level the decision tree. This may sound silly, but I think you'd be surprised how many CEOs are promising AI solutions to their stakeholders, when in reality, their special proprietary solution is a huge web of manually crafted if-else statements or even better, the fattest SQL statement you've ever seen, where some poor data engineer had to nest 20 different case statements in a single query. This is a powerful approach, and it will take you very far. For my example, I've created a very simple Pong AI. It takes two parameters, the position of the ball and its current position. It has a single if-else statement. If the ball is higher than the current position, it moves up. If it is lower than the current position, it moves down. It sounds pretty simple, and it is, but this is the first step for a decision tree. The beauty of this is that it's so easy to get started, but you can add additional logic as necessary. This works for games, but it also works for data analytics and other use cases. Critical thinking is just about making the right decision given a specific state. A decision tree is the most fundamental way to do that. It's not the most impressive or attractive decision engine, but this approach is a fantastic way to get started. That being said, our little Pong AI isn't very convincing. Level 2 AI takes the decision tree one step further and implements a state machine. Instead of a single decision tree, we can split our AI's behavior into separate states. This is not more powerful than a decision tree, but it is a useful way to model and maintain an AI that can have multiple behaviors. Instead of having my AI constantly chase the ball, I can create an idle state. For this example, the idle state will just move up and down while waiting for the ball to come back. Each state has specific behaviors and some triggers that will move to another state. We can model all the potential states in our AI and the transitions between them at a high level, making the implementation somewhat trivial. Just be careful not to get lost in diagrams. It's for code that matters at the end of the day. State machines can be used to model many systems they often feel like a natural abstraction of the real world. They can also be very convincing. The ability to adapt and change as the environment around them changes gives them better tools to perform critical thinking. They are still very rudimentary though. All the states are predetermined and manually coded. This can be a disadvantage, but it can also be an advantage. Unlike large language models or neural networks, state machines are completely customizable. There is no magic and all parameters are strictly within your control. This can be a huge advantage if you need consistent and predictable results. Level 3 AI is where we start to move towards AI that extrapolates for itself. If the problem requires a more sophisticated solution than a state machine, a dedicated algorithm may be an appropriate solution. Level 3 is the broadest of all the levels, since vastly different algorithms are used for different problem spaces, but a well-written and implemented mathematical algorithm can still give your customers and shareholders that AI buzz. 
For this example, I created an AI that plays Connect4. This AI consists of two algorithms. One evaluates any Connect4 position and assigns it a numerical value. It does this by comparing the number of connected pieces for each side. The second algorithm is a pre-existing algorithm called Minimax. This algorithm looks through all available moves recursively and tries to find the best move by evaluating all possible positions at a certain depth. Every time it is the AI's turn to play, it looks at the eight possible moves and evaluates their positions at a depth of five. A negative valuation means that the resulting position after the five best moves have been played for each side is better for the human player, while a positive valuation indicates that the resulting position would be better for the AI. The AI then selects the best move for itself according to this calculation. This is a specific set of algorithms tailored to playing turn-based games, but algorithms can be written to solve many specific problems. A level 4 AI is a neural network. This is where AI begins to feel like magic. A neural network is a large network of nodes that are trained on large amounts of data. The training process usually uses trial and error to try and optimize for random starting values and provide a beneficial outcome. I created a neural network that can identify handwritten numbers and exported the weights to a massive JSON array. My neural network has four layers. The input layer has 784 nodes, one for every pixel in a 28 by 28 pixel image. I have two hidden layers of 32 nodes each. Each node has a weight associated with all the nodes on the next layer. The final layer consists of 10 nodes, one for each number. The results are returned as a number between 0 and 1 for each output node, indicating how likely the network thinks that the input is this number. These hidden layers are relatively small since I am running this directly in the browser. But it still performs surprisingly well. In my experience, I found it is particularly good at identifying the numbers 3 and 5, but it can struggle with some of the other numbers. And that's the problem with neural networks. You just throw data at a node topology and hope that the output is close enough. You don't really have the ability to make fine adjustments without throwing everything out and trying again. Neural networks really thrive when they are trained for a very specific, repeatable task with a high quality data set. General neural networks, like LLMs, are incredibly expensive and inefficient, hence why there are only a few large language models. These level 5 AIs can do amazing things. Large language models are at the forefront of this trend towards the AIification of everything. I believe that there is too much obsession with level 5 AI. There is still a lot of value that comes from leveraging the lower levels. We need to stop chasing a universal solution. The biggest benefit of this AI boom is that it's easier than ever to implement your own neural network, algorithm, state machine, or decision tree. It's all very clearly documented and open source. I also think companies should make it clearer what level of AI they are using. Is your application just a chat GPT wrapper, or is it an in-house neural network? or maybe even a complex state machine or finely tuned algorithm? Or is it an underpaid data engineer with a massive Excel spreadsheet? 